Welcome to Cinematic Excrement. Now with less sodium. We're starting the new year off with an old friend? No. Acquaintance? Hmm. Thing I mostly tolerate? Yeah, that's about as good as we're gonna get. It's the third and possibly final movie in the Birdemic franchise, Birdemic 3 Sea Eagle. Sea Eagle. As I'm sure many of you know, but I'm going to waste time telling you anyway, this movie series started back in 2010 with Birdemic, Shock, and Terror, a romantic thriller from the mind of former software salesman James Wynn. It was made on a budget of $10,000 and came to be regarded as one of the worst movies ever made, but it was well within So Bad It's Good territory, largely due to a combination of the movie's earnestness and Wynn's incompetence. Heavily inspired by the works of Alfred Hitchcock, he clearly wanted to make a Hollywood-style action movie with a strong environmental message, but had neither the skill nor the money to do so. The end result was a spectacular mess. Everything that could have gone wrong did, even things that shouldn't have been possible to screw up, like the editing between shots during this conversation between the romantic leads, played by Alan Baugh and Whitney Moore, weird freeze frames between crossfades, unnecessary pauses between lines that easily could have been cut. I don't think I could edit this badly on purpose. And in the early days of my YouTube channel, my editing was pretty bad, but still not as bad as Birdemic. And with the stilted movement and dialogue, no one in this movie looks or sounds like an actual human. This could partly stem from the fact that English is not Wynn's first language, and reportedly the native English speakers in the cast offered to help fix some of the dialogue, but he refused. Whatever was on the page is what they had to say. And of course, there's the special effects. <laughs> When I first saw that, I just about died laughing. I mean, this is so ugly that it somehow loops around and becomes beautiful. You got these cheap clip art birds awkwardly flying around, spitting acid and exploding on impact. It's glorious. James claimed he paid an art student to do the effects for this movie, but I know for a fact several of the names in the credits are fake, so it wouldn't surprise me to learn James actually did all of this himself. I could go on and on about all of the problems with this movie, but I already have, so feel free to check out my original review. The reception to Birdemic was clearly not what Wynn was hoping for, but he handled it remarkably well. He embraced the fans' response and laughed and waved coat hangers right along with them. Even if it didn't go as planned, he was happy people were enjoying his movie regardless of the reason. And that was really nice to see. At first. Then he made Birdemic 2 The Resurrection. It did not go well. Birdemic 2 saw Ba and Moore return to their roles, though that almost didn't happen with Moore due to how Wynn reportedly treated her during the filming of the first movie. There are a few scenes that make it quite clear she was added into Birdemic 2 at the last minute. We also get a new pair of romantic leads in the form of Thomas Favaloro and Chelsea Turnbow, plus all the crazy shit you remember from the first movie. Stilted performances, terrible editing, cheap special effects, dance sequences that go on entirely too long, and sleazy motel sex scenes that don't feature any actual sex. And this is where everything falls apart. With the first movie, Wynn was legitimately trying to make a Hollywood-style thriller. His sincerity being matched by his failure was part of the charm. But now he's in on the joke, so he's just repeating what he did the first time because he thinks that's what the fans want to see. The sincerity is gone. The ineptitude is still on display, but a lot of things that make Birdemic 2 terrible are done on purpose. It's usually not funny when you intentionally make a bad movie. Sure, there are exceptions, Black Dynamite comes to mind, but Black Dynamite was a spoof of the blaxploitation genre. Birdemic 2 is just Wynn trying to retell a joke and not quite nailing the punchline. It still had some funny moments, but overall it was a disappointment. And that brings us to Birdemic 3, Sea Eagle, which by all rights shouldn't exist. As I mentioned when I reviewed Birdemic 2, Wynn tried to crowdfund this movie twice, and each time he only got a few hundred dollars. Even that's not enough for a Birdemic movie. And people actively tried to talk him out of making Birdemic 3, as evidenced by an episode of the Vice documentary series Outsider, which features Wen meeting with an actual Hollywood talent agency. And when he explains he's trying to get a major Hollywood studio and 10 to 20 million dollars to make the film, good luck with that, Mr. Van Steenberg gives him some very good advice. My recommendation for you, if you want to move ahead, it's taking those small steps. If you directed a short film, something that 
that is going to look and feel utterly different than Birdemic. I think if you just head straight into some meeting expecting maybe like a $10 million budget, those doors are going to shut in your face. Yes. If you do like, if your next movie, quite honestly, is Birdemic 3, you are just the Birdemic guy. And James acknowledges Peter just gave him some really good advice, which he refuses to follow. I think it'd be really cool to do a short film. I don't do short. Oh, just, okay. yeah, so just, you don't want to do a short film? No, we just... I think I'll, I'll take his advice, uh, kind of like, uh, after I make with 3. This is what kills me. It's painfully obvious to everyone, and I think that includes James Wynn, even if he won't admit it out loud, that he needs to move on if he ever wants to be taken seriously as a filmmaker. But he just can't do it. He is hopelessly tied to Birdemic. And sure, it brought him fame and fortune, but now it's dragging him down. And sadly, I think he will forever be known as the Birdemic guy. I kind of feel bad for him. It passed. So let's talk about Birdemic 3. Like I said, Wynn tried and failed to crowdfund this movie, so I have no idea who's paying for this, and I'm not exactly sure how much they paid. Estimates I've seen online range from $10,000 to $600,000, though I'm pretty sure it's closer to the lower end of that spectrum. At least this time around, they could afford something that resembles a proper opening title sequence, with white text on a light blue background. That was certainly a choice. And what is up with that background? It looks like a Van Gogh painting threw up. And Birdemic 3 is clearly trying to capture the magic of the first movie, even more so than Birdemic 2, which is not a good sign. For those of you playing the Birdemic drinking game, San Francisco Bay Area, take a shot. Pointless driving sequence, take a shot. Fake names in the credits, take a shot. Male lead is a wealthy entrepreneur who is greatly concerned about the environment, take a shot. He doesn't know how to walk like a human. Take a shot. He spends entirely too long staring at a hot blonde girl. Take a shot. Tim, global warming? Take a shot. By this point, you're probably hoping the alcohol is at least making this movie tolerable. Well, it's not. It still sucks, and now you lack the strength to get up and leave, which means you're stuck here watching it with me. Ha! Anyway, our male lead is played this time by Ryan Lord, who only has one other credit on IMDb for a movie called The End, where he played Chode 5. I have so many questions. After we spend way too much time watching him walk aimlessly around the Santa Cruz Wharf, he approaches our female lead, played by Julia Colbert. I honestly can't be bothered to remember their character names, so I will simply refer to them as Chode and Blondie. Just curious, why are you pouring water into those bottles? Why are you asking? Guess I'm just curious. Like I literally just said I was. Wait a minute. Wasn't there something like this in Birdemic 2? This may be a coincidence, but you remind me of someone I used to know. Really? What a coincidence. <sighs> Take a shot. Actually, no, no more shots. You're gonna die. I'm researching how the water's affecting the marine life at Santa Cruz Beach. Hmm, interesting. I'm researching how the lighting and audio quality keep changing drastically between shots. Now tell me, at some point while filming this scene, did James drop either the boom mic or the camera into the ocean? Anyway, Blondie, a marine biologist, goes on to say how increased CO2 levels in the ocean are making it more acidic, and this is causing cancer in marine life, such as seals. I don't think the cancer part is actually true, that sounds like something Wynn pulled out of his ass. Wouldn't be the first time. But increased CO2 levels due to climate change can have a negative impact on marine life. That's trash. Yeah, that is trash. Like I said in my Birdemic 2 review, James is in on the joke now, so I have no idea if that audio glitch or the million other problems with this movie are intentional or actual mistakes. But even if they are intentional, I think we can apply the rule of goats. Google it if you don't know. I'm actually a scientist too. I study aging. I'm a gerontologist. Sorry, I had to think about my own job title for a second there. As you can probably tell by now, the acting between our two leads is about on par with the previous two movies. I suspect Wynn didn't give them the script very far in advance, or possibly at all, as it often looks like they're reading off cue cards. And they occasionally flub their lines, but Wynn failed to crowdfund this movie twice. He can't afford a second take. Colbert is at least trying, God bless her. You can tell the script and Wynn's direction are holding her back, but every once in a while her personality shines through. Lord, on the other hand... Well, if he has a personality, I didn't see it in this movie. He's the greatest acting robot I've seen since David Duchovny. Anyway, Chode suggests he and Blondie should grab a bite to eat, and the dialogue suggests he means right now. But then they don't actually go on their date until sometime later. Is it the next day? The next week? 
The next month? I don't know. Time works differently in Birdemic, if indeed it works at all. Blondie gets a good 30 seconds to talk about what she does for a living, and then we're moving on because she's a girl. Who cares what she does? Cho then rants for several minutes about the effects of aging. I see Mr. Wynn has found something new to obsess over in addition to climate change. And that's why we develop gray hair, wrinkly skin, and memory loss, as well as age-related diseases like Alzheimer's. What really got me into the study of aging was when my grandmother passed away from Alzheimer's, an age-related disease. Number one, you literally just said Alzheimer's is an age-related disease. Heard you the first time. And two, why do you say diseases that way? So that people, uh, even when they go to 70 and on, will have a really great life without these age-related diseases. It sounds like you're saying diseases. That's a whole ass other word. Anyway, he goes on to give Blondie some nutritional advice, suggesting a diet of 90% vegetables along with fruit and white meat. So where does that wine fit in? I don't think that strictly qualifies as a fruit. And then he immediately starts shilling away for his supplement company. Jesus, tap dancing Christ, this guy is throwing out all of the red flags. People, if you are ever on a date with someone and they start trying to sell you something, run. And of course they start talking about Hitchcock because, well, you know who made this movie. And yes, this violates the rule about not referring to a better movie during your own. What's your favorite film? Mmm, Vertigo. That's a coincidence, that's my favorite movie too. Really, what a coincidence. After this boring conversation that goes nowhere, they decide to take a walk to nowhere. Yep, that's the ocean alright. Well, we're done here. And then they walk by a climate change protest which gets really weird. First, they keep screaming, Extinction Insurrection. Extinction Insurrection! Extinction Insurrection! I know what those words mean individually, but I have no idea what James is trying to say by putting them together. Second, there are a couple of moments where Wynn focuses on individual protesters, and during these moments, the other protesters keep chanting, but they do so very quietly. No fossil no. fuels. Yeah. No fossil Protect fuels. Protect our children no. and let them see a sky that is blue. Okay. That's pathetic. But I do get what James was trying to do here. He wanted the other protesters to keep chanting in the background while he focused in on one particular protester. But on a technical level, he has no idea how to do that. So basically, he just told the other extras, keep chanting, but use your inside voice. And the end result is they just sound bored. Stop climate change. Protect our future. Extinction insurrection. Extinction insurrection. What does that mean? So if you've seen the previous movies, you know it takes an ungodly amount of time for anything to happen. This is no different. We have almost an hour of nothing happening. We see Chode selling his supplements. We see Chode buying a house from a realtor he met on the beach, drinking beer out of a glass bottle, which I'm pretty sure is breaking multiple laws. But it's not like Wynn has ever shown a propensity for following the law. Film permits? What are those? We see him talking to some other filthy rich entrepreneur because James has a type. You are Mr. Green, founder of Pay Me, Odyssey Space Line, and the Green Car Company. Oh gee, I wonder who this is supposed to be a stand-in for. Except it's not, because Chode owns a Tesla. So in a world where the real Elon Musk exists, they also had to invent a fake one? What was the point of that? That was rhetorical. I know there's no point to any of this. Anyway, we see Chode watching a news segment, and this newsreader is somehow worse than the one from the first movie. We visit Cameron's pub because... Why not? We see someone get attacked by a shark in Santa Cruz Bay, which I assume is a callback to the giant jumbo jellyfish attack in Birdemic 2. And Chode goes on several dates with Blondie, which is about the only time we see her. At least in the first two movies, we had a small glimpse into the career of the cute blonde girl, but in Birdemic 3, James has given up on that. Blondie is here to be the girlfriend, and that's it. Oh, but wait! In the midst of all this nothing happening, there is still one thing to look forward to. The Damien Carter dance party! Is what I wish I could say. Don't get me wrong, the Damien Carter dance party is still in the movie, but it's a major letdown. And this bothers me more than anything else because it's the one thing I was looking forward to. But the song feels half-assed, Damien's singing is a bit weak, and he doesn't even look like he wants to be there. Honestly, I can't say I blame him. And if that wasn't enough, we then get a second pointless dance number, this time featuring some middle-aged white dude singing a middle-aged white song. 
Make it stop. Oh, thank God, we finally got to the sleazy motel sex scene, which makes no sense because they both live here. That must mean it's finally time for... Oh, crappy CGI birds, how I've missed you. It sure took you long enough to show up, even by Birdemic standards. And the birds look marginally better this time around. At least they're kind of moving like birds instead of just hovering. But after that initial attack, things immediately get very calm. Do Chode and Blondie really not know the birds just attacked Santa Cruz? In the age of the internet, how is that possible? It's the third time this has happened! Surely there would be an app on their phone that's blowing up right now warning them about, well... No, you know what? The government would have abandoned that app a year after the second attack. People would be proclaiming the bird attacks were a hoax and a democratic conspiracy. And even if they were real, so what? Most people survive birdemic attacks. It's no big deal. Chode and Blondie would totally be in the dark right now. James, I will give it to you this one time. You got something right. Anyway, as they wander through the woods, they come across... Wait. No. Oh my god, it's Rod! I almost didn't recognize him, as he's apparently had neither a haircut nor a shave since Birdemic 2. Obviously he has a new girlfriend now because they barely convinced Whitney Moore to come back for the second movie. She damn sure wasn't gonna be in the third. I'm sure she was far too busy doing anything else. Oh no, the CGI birds! 12 years ago they attacked me and Nelly in Half Moon Bay! <laughs> uh, miss, could you speak toward the boom? We couldn't afford lav mics. They get some guns from a biker gang that's been killed by the birds, and they gently set this guy who's clearly still alive on the side of the road while they steal his car. Which is a plug-in hybrid. Actually, based on the footage from the Vice documentary, I think that's the director's car. And I think that's the director. And I think this is the funniest line in the movie. The birds are stressing me out. I need a beer. You and me both, Rod. While they get crunk, the birds attack more people who defend themselves with various weapons. Shockingly, no coat hangers. Dude, what are you swinging at? There's nothing there. Did they forget to add the CGI birds to this shot? Or is he just crazy? Sadly, our heroes don't run into the weirdo with the wig and the treehouse, but this random old dude is happy to rant about the damn global warming in his place. I'm a climate scientist, Professor Emeritus, University of San Francisco. Emeritus? Professor, I think you're putting the emphasis on the wrong syllable. And I kid you not, the professor's advice that he's clearly reading on the cue cards is, we're all gonna die, so get to fucking. So spend a lot of time with each other. Make love. Have a lot of sex. Well, I can't say the movie has no good ideas. In the end, well, you know how it ends. You've seen this twice before. The heroes make one last stand against the birds and, oh, Rod found a coat hanger. On the beach. Sure, why not? And for no reason whatsoever, the birds suddenly give up and leave. Birds are giving us a second chance. No, I'm pretty sure the second chance was two movies ago. Please try to keep up. And they fly off in slow motion despite nothing else in the shot moving in slow motion. And after a credit sequence that somehow looks worse than the title sequence, seriously, how can anyone read this? Mercifully, that's the end of Birdemic 3 and hopefully the end of this franchise. Well, that was a colossal waste of time. And I seriously hope James means it when he says he is done with Birdemic, because he needs to be. Everyone else is. As I already mentioned, he had two failed attempts at crowdfunding this movie. The DVD bonus features include footage from early screenings, and attendance is... not great. Hell, at the time of this recording, Birdemic 3 doesn't even have a Wikipedia page. Not in English, anyway. People have moved on, and rightfully so. The magic Wynn stumbled upon with the first movie was already long gone with the second. Now he's just beating a dead horse. James, a grateful nation thanks you for Birdemic shock and terror. God bless you. But it's time to move on to the next chapter of your life, whatever that might be. And I hope Julia moves on to bigger and better things because she was too good for this movie. And I know James has said he wants a major Hollywood studio to take over and remake Birdemic, but... Why? I mean, would that even work? Birdemic being cheaply made schlock is what made it entertaining in the first place. If you put a real filmmaker and an actual budget behind it, it just wouldn't have the same effect. I can't imagine a remake of Birdemic would be anything but mediocre. Too bad to be worthwhile, too polished to be interesting. Besides, a professionally made Birdemic already exists. It's called The Birds. You know, the Hitchcock movie that clearly inspired Wynn to make Birdemic in the first place? For all intents and purposes, Birdemic is just a remake of The Birds. 
If you remake Birdemic, you're basically remaking a remake. What would be the point? The franchise is dead. Let it lie. I want to make Birdemic 4, talk about Birdemic 4, Garden of Eden. Oh, God damn it. Don't bother wasting your time with this movie. Even if you're a Birdemic fan, it's not fun anymore. Now, it's just trash. Well, that was a slog. Great way to start the new year. Uh, I gotta change gears. I need something stupid and fun. And I think I have just the thing. Till next time. Eagles, they came by and just crashed into everything. It was a terrible day.